the final teaser image dropped today about the new Bamboo Lab H2D. And a little hint, lasers are confirmed. Stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today's the 24th, tomorrow's the big announcement of the H2D, and we have our final teaser image. And I'm a little torn on this one, but the laser is confirmed. Let's take a look. Here we are again on the Bamboo Lab H2D page, and this is our final image here, and that is the laser module. When you click on it, we get this, let there be light, Tomorrow's the big day. So let's talk a little bit about lasers. But before we do that, let's uh, jump back into Photoshop, look a little bit more at these pictures. So there is our let there be light image. And the first thing that I want you all to notice is this right here. That is the nozzle. That is one of the two nozzles. I really thought that this would replace the tool head uh, when you were doing any kind of laser engraving. Now, I, I, you know, the more I thought about that, and not to say that I was right all, all along or anything of that nature, but you've got your, you know, your um, PTFE tubes that are going to the tool head. You'd have to remove those every time. Obviously, there's probably going to be a good amount of wiring for the heating and the motors and all that kind of stuff. So that could have been complicated. So it looks like they made the decision to just put the laser right on front of the tool head. Now, one, I mean, this is a 20 watt laser module and it's pretty hefty. That's a lot of mass, you know, to be moving around plus the tool head. But anyway, so we've got this, let there be light. One other thing that I notice here is this extra, you know, graphic right here. Um, they're making this look like a one for some reason. I'm not sure if that means anything or not. Um, let's take a look at this other uh, graphic here. So again, you can see the nozzle there. We see uh, probably most of these units. I know it's kind of dark here and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you've got a nozzle around the lens because you need to focus the air as it comes out um, for your air assist. That really aids in uh, cutting. You primarily want to use that when you're cutting. So there's our nozzle and again you can see the tool head back here. You've got your uh, cooling uh, nozzles back here. You've got, let me get rid of this, you've got the uh, little, whether it's the LiDAR or the uh, tool head camera, whatever that is that we talked about in the last video. So you've got all of these uh, elements so you know it looks like the laser is right on top there. Um, but Let's talk about lasers. I've prepared a couple of demonstrations, um, again, using this uh, just a 20 watt diode laser um, on why I'm a little torn on putting a laser module inside a 3D printer enclosure. So let's take a look at this video. This is an example of cutting six millimeter plywood with a 20 watt diode laser. I am outside, you can see the amount of smoke that is being created. This is like sitting right next to a campfire. Here is what you're left with after a burn or a uh, cut through plywood. Uh, you can see the amount of, uh, this is kind of a very uh, greasy and sticky soot that you're left with. So that's one of the uh, byproducts of cutting wood with a laser. Now, if you don't have a honeycomb, then you'd be cutting right on a some kind of a plate. And this is not near as ideal. You have less room for the, the uh, debris to pass through the material and you're going to have a lot of, of that soot on the bottom side of your material. So let's see how this works out. Again, you can see the amount of smoke that's being generated. So here is the result of our cut. 
And as you can see, as I remove our piece here, um, if you look at the bottom of this, so again, this is without a honeycomb, and this is the one that we cut with a honeycomb. So you can see why that's so important to have somewhere for all of this to go. And then when we look at the bottom, this is what has happened to our tray down here. It is covered in all of this. And I have barely used this tray. I don't use my diode lasers that often. And the one thing I want to point out to you, this is, I'm not sure the exact thickness of this stainless steel sheet, but if you look, this is just from a little bit of use with a 20 watt diode laser. Uh, it generates enough heat to actually warp this. You can see the backside from some other tests. Uh, there's a lot of heat generated from these lasers. So this is one of the reasons that I'm not terribly keen on putting a laser in a 3D printer. Fumes and smoke in lasers is a big deal. Uh, for example, this is the fan that I took out of my 60 watt CO2 laser. I mean, this is a pretty good size fan. I don't know if you can uh, read that there, but this was a 38 watt fan, I think six inch fan. I replaced it with this AC Infinity um, that has a really high cubic foot per minute uh, extraction rate for my CO2 laser because this guy could not keep up. And one thing just about every laser owner will tell you is that once you start using lasers, you never want a small laser. You're always looking to go bigger. This is a 20 by 28 inch uh, laser. And again, I mean, look at the size of the exhaust port that uh, runs on this machine. Lasers can be great, don't get me wrong. I'm not here to bash laser owners. I have made thousands and thousands of dollars with this machine, but uh, they are dirty beasts. That is the air uh, outlet for this machine. So I do know a little bit about what I'm talking about. All right, and the last little point I wanna make is just the amount of you know, soot and everything that gets really close to the laser. Now, I've only had this one for a couple of days. I've, I'm doing a review on it. I've done a few, you know, test cuts, but maybe a couple hours, two hours at most. And uh, you can see how it's already getting a lot of discoloration and soot. So it's gonna need a good bit of cleaning. Uh, this is the last laser I reviewed about a year ago. Haven't really used it since, but again, look at the nozzle. Cause these nozzles are relatively close, close to the cutting distance. And apparently this is gonna be pretty close to the nozzles on the Bamboo Lab H2D. All right, so what do you think? Is the laser a good idea? Is it a bad idea? I mean, honestly, I'm not here trying to bash bamboo. I love my bamboo printers. I just think this is a really weird thing to put in a, in a uh, 3D printer. Now, a 450 nanometer laser, um, 455, which the blue lasers that, that they're you know, that are on the leak spec sheet, they show the blue light right there. They don't really work terribly well with anything that you're gonna print on a 3D printer, right? Um, if, it, if this was an infrared module, those will actually turn like black, uh, PLA, PETG, white um, or gray. So you could engrave logos and stuff, but really like a blue laser is just gonna kind of melt um, anything that you put there. So. I, I don't know. Um, what do you think? Are you excited about the laser? Is this, you know, making you uh, like this more? Are you concerned? Um, is your space set up to have all sorts of, you know, piping to get rid of these fumes? Um, one thing that I did want to point out, some people, you know, well, one, people have said, like, I don't know, bleep about lasers. I've been doing this for a couple of years. I know, a, you know, I'm a... I'm slightly educated on lasers, so um, I'll just, you know, leave it at that. But anyway, people are saying, well, you know, Bamboo's got the HEPA filters, they've got the exhaust fan, they'll have it all figured out. Um, I showed you how big the exhaust fan is on my CO2 laser. I use the same 60 watt uh, AC Infinity fan to provide exhaust and ducting for my fiber laser. Um, 
if you don't have the ability to pump this out of a window or door or some sort of an exhaust, uh, they do make filtration systems that you can use, but let's take a look at one really quick here. Okay, I just picked this brand because I'd heard about it. Um, they are an Australian-based company, company, Apple Air, and you can see here they make uh, fume extractors for CO2 lasers, etc. K40 is a very, very small. It's like 12 inches, uh, you know, I don't know the exact size, but it's basically like the smallest laser cutter you can get. And they say up to 700 by 500. Look at the price on this uh, air filter. It's $1,500 for an air filter. And it is gonna have all sorts, just layers and layers and layers upon filters. And that is something, look first, there are five, six, seven uh, filters, and these are gonna only last six to 12 months. And then you're going to have to put them uh, based on changing filters every six months, the yearly cost of filters would be 450 uh, excluding GST. So again, that's, or that's uh, Australian, but anyway, you can run these things inside if you don't have direct exhaust, but the filtering systems for lasers is no joke. It's much more than the little tiny HEPA filters that we see in our printers. So enough about that. All right, folks, so that's enough of me rambling on about lasers. Let me know again in the comments what you think about this. Thumbs up, thumbs down. We're gonna see tomorrow. I'm looking forward to the announcement. As always, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, I would really appreciate it if you take a minute to hit the little like button, hit the little bell for notifications, and please hit that subscribe button. Um, Y'all have been doing me a huge service in subscribing to the channel, and I'm looking forward to bringing you more content. As always, I do look forward to spending time with you as often as possible. Let's keep on learning, burning, printing, and growing together. Oh, and laser cutting. Take care, everyone.